Number two is exposure, right? After having so much training, you need a place to execute that things, things you've learned. Uh, you need places because practice makes perfect. Opportunity to be in a place and just do your thing over and over and over again is ultimately how you become better. There's a rule we call the 10,000 hour rule. And the rule says that for you to rise to become to the top 10 or 1% in your field, you need to put in 10,000 hours. And that's talking about average of seven years if you're putting eight, eight years every day. Okay? Uh, so it's important to know that the talent will not just become a skill on its own. You need to train, and then you need the exposure. You need platforms. You need op opportunities to just display uh, what you have, who you are, and what you can do. And the more you do this, the more you know you are able to uh, be in a position where people will say, wow, we're willing to pay. Oftentimes, I'm asked this question. So, Dr. Stephen, I've been doing free. I've been doing free. I've done free. I'm free. I'm free. And it's almost as if nobody ever wants to pay me. Okay? They're just used to the free. And my answer is that how do you know when to move from free to fee? It's simple. When there's demand on your time. Yes. That's the same way I did it. So, at some point, I told you, you know, I'll be begging people, let me coach you, let me help you with your business, let me give you ideas. And then, well, some showed up, some didn't show up. But a time came when naturally, right, there are two, three people asking to be coached at the same time. And so I gradually introduced many. So I told the three, I'm sorry, quite busy, but I will see what I can do. However, you will need to pay some money. Okay, and I started with a very, you know, reasonable amount. I think when I started public speaking, my initial charges were even less than, were, were less than $100 to speak. It used to be on my website then, right? For you to get me to speak one hour, you know, $100, that's fine. Um, you know, and gradually, I realized out of the three that wanted me same date, Maybe one had agreed to pay the hundred dollars. Now I go for the one. So gradually, a time will come. The three wants to pay hundred dollars. You see, and it's clashing. So now I say, okay, are you willing to pay two fifty? The one who is ready to pay two fifty gets it. Now my prices has moved. Today, you know, I realize that people are willing to pay as much as twenty thousand dollars to have me speak at their event. So it will you will move gradual as the demand comes as the pressure comes uh that will ultimately help very very important another way also to help you scale up your ability to monetize your talent is also that you yourself must master the art of also paying others who are training you remember we said for you to move from talent to skill, you need training and you need exposure. And you need mentorship. Sorry, I, I forgot the third one. Mentorship is the third. And I will later talk more extensively at the end of this class about mentorship. I can't overemphasize that. However, your own ability to also start going for paid programs. Because sometimes you start with church and those of us who are Christians, we always have the opportunity, you know, um, to do things in church, to be trained in church almost for free. Uh, you inquire. There's a lot of free training in music. Uh, but at some point, you need to start paying. Very, very important. Very, very powerful. Um, you need to start paying. And what I realized that the more you pay, the more confident you become to charge. Okay? Uh, a few weeks ago, I just returned from Florida where I went for a conference. It's called the 10X Growth Conference, you know, organized by a gentleman called Grant Cardone. He's into real estate. He controls over $4 billion in, in real estate assets, and he's one of my real estate mentors. Now, because I pay the diamond ticket, it was $20,000 just for the ticket. Now, I needed to pay for my flight. Uh, I needed to pay for my accommodation. Now, if 
just one three-day conference and it cost me over thirty thousand dollars do you think i would be scared <laughs> to charge somebody else twenty thousand dollars or ten thousand or five thousand dollars do you see now but if i've never paid somebody okay now when i'm charging i'm even scared to charge i'm feeling bad that i'm even charging okay because most of the platforms and opportunities that i've been trained through were free so one of the ways to move from free to fee with your talent is to also start paying and and this is very very critical it's very very important it's helped me in a very very great way okay number three on that you know monetizing your talent self-employment is you moving with people who are already monetizing their skills so you can look for somebody who is one of the highest paid person in what you do and say can i anchor for you can i carry your bag for you and i'll share a personal experience so i used to organize training years back and my trains were very cheap you know five thousand nigerian naira then <laughs> And I realized I struggled to get the venue filled up, right? And I was just wondering what's going on. So I got close to a particular gentleman who was based in London. And then he would come to Nigeria to organize an event in Lagos, Nigeria, Sheraton Hotel. And at one of those events, I said, let me anchor for you. And he said, why not? So I anchored the event for him. I didn't charge him. But I watched this man sell out. Literally, he was selling then 25,000 naira. And what he was doing basically was motivation. In fact, when he speaks, he either tells you about three types of car, the difference between uh, a German machine and a Toyota, just inspire you. And yet people were willing to pay another 25,000 naira for a, a master class session. And before I say Jack Robinson, you have 50 people who have paid, 100 people who have paid. I was doing 5,000 and sometimes I would teach them seven businesses you can do. <laughs> and nobody wanted to come. So over time, again, that's part of why you need to move with those. A lot of us struggle to be comfortable with those who are ahead of us in the same industry. If you're wise, you get closer to them. And you even volunteer for them and then get to see how they are running their craft. And later on, I realized that one of the secrets of this man was that he has some of the best flyers. Second of all, I noticed he was always using very expensive venues, strategic locations. So I said, well, I may not be able to afford Sheraton. And then, then we used to call it Protea Hotel in Ikeja. Uh, I said, well, let me get to their smaller hall that can take 40 people. He used to use uh, the Sheraton major venue that can take over 100 people. So I did one of my courses, digital marketing, right? I think this was 12 years ago or so. And then for the first time in my life, I charged 30,000 naira. Really scared. And then I said, 50% discount if you can pay before a certain day. Now, remember, I didn't even have money for the venue. So all I went to do was to book and promise them that two weeks to the training, I'll bring the money. So I told people, three weeks to the training, if you can pay between now and three weeks to the training, you have yourself 50% discount, you pay just 15,000 naira. Now remember, I, I, I shared how I would teach even four businesses, five businesses. This time around, I focus on just one. And to my surprise, ladies and gentlemen, I had over you know, 60% of the booking paying 15000 even before the day of the event. I had enough money to pay for the whole. And on the day of the train, the place was filled up. I said, wow. <laughs> so indeed, having a very good graphics and then having a good venue for my event really works. And honestly, it, 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 and since that time, Today, you know, my cheapest training goes for $50. 
right and i learned since that time to use the best venue and so even anywhere in the world i'm either using a four-star hotel or a five-star hotel for my event in fact today is so bad even when i'm doing free event that is physical i still use the same venue but i learned by just you know moving closer to somebody who was ahead of me in the same field i did not allow myself to feel jealous and to uh, feel intimidated i was willing to serve even though we were friends but i knew he had more resolve than i do and i got what i was missing okay so that said about the second way you can make money you know raise finance raise funds right you want to monetize a gift you want to monetize your talent like the scripture says the gift of a man make room for him right there's power in your gift and it's time to be paid for it because it's one of the ways to become financially free and to raise ultimately capital for your business or capital for investments that will make you financially free in the future are we ready number three way to make money is to then own a business that can run with or without you i realize that particularly in africa many of us often feel that once you start a company you are now a businessman by the drill definition you only you only a self-employed you only become a business owner when you now own a system that can help the company to run effectively even when you're not there so a tesla is a business right with a system a microsoft is a business with a system even in nigeria uba right um a dangote group is a system even without dangote the dangote you know cement will run easily right so a business a real business um, is becoming a business owner is actually the process of remember uh we talked about active income and passive income so the first two i talked about the job and being self-employed or monetizing your talent are both active income and the next two is passive income which is being a business owner with a system that can work with or without you and then also being an investor those are the other two and so listen carefully as we proceed on how do you move because this is the ideal place you need to be you need to either be a business owner or you need to be an investor because these are the real two model for being financially free and free indeed actually now how do you then move from just being a self-employed just running a business so uh, having a business that has a system and that it's a business that can run without you the first is called opt opt order people's time i know many of us have always had this idea of i don't like the fact that i don't have control over my time as an employee but in reality, even when you own your business, for your business to thrive, you need to employ people. And those people need to put in the hours. They need to work for you. And so every business that run on a system are businesses that the founder has leverage on other people's time. And I'm talking of companies that now have 100 employees, 300 employees, 500 employees, 1,000 employees. Your ability to leverage on each of these people's skills Right? Of course, you are paying them cash in exchange for their time. But that is really how to then scale a business from self-employed to becoming a business with a system. And I'll give you a simple example. A tailor. When you're a tailor, you're self-employed. You have to cut the clothes. You have Even when you now have a few other tailors working with you, you're still self-employed. But guess what? The same you right can become a louis vuitton right at the level of louis vuitton ladies and gentlemen mm -hmm. okay 
the same Taylor who founded Louis Vuitton is now leveraging on other people's time to scale that same business. A lot of people didn't know that Gucci started as a one-man business, just self-employment. Just the man started it, he's good with the whole thing, does the things himself. But at some point, it has to scale where it is now running with or without him. And that is really where financial freedom comes in. And for that to happen, you have to leverage on other people's time. So, O P T. Right? The next thing you must leverage on is other people's money, OPM. At the level when you run a business that is so powerful, so big, so large, you must have leverage on other people's money. And so oftentimes people see a lot of entrepreneurs and they admire them. And they say, oh, this man is so rich. No, no, I often say this. You're only as rich to the degree of trust that people place on you. Because ultimately, none of us can scale our business with our own personal money. We ultimately, we have to scale the business with other people's money. And those people will only give us their money if they trust us. So we as a company, for example, for the last 16 years, we've started from bulk SMS business, digital marketing, being faithful at it, then moving to real estate. Right This year, we're raising the highest funds ever in our history. In one year, we're attempting to raise $100 million. Not sales, just to raise funds. Particularly for a U.S. business, so we're doing a over 400,000 unit in Katy, Texas, and so it's a 150 million dollar project. We are raising 45 million, and then getting investment for the rest from institutional investors. And then we have a second project, that is a 50 million dollar project in Richmond, same Houston, and then we're raising 15 million. And then we're getting 35 million dollars for that. And then we have some other ones later in the year, okay? But hear this, we will not have been able to get to this point, to even have the courage to be able to tell people, come invest, come put your money, if we have not gone through this other journey in a faithful manner, right? No perfect company, by the way. We have, we have challenges are normal, but we've done everything with clear conscience, with integrity, the best way we can and that has created a system where more people trust us more people know who we are more people believe in our story than a few who may not okay and that's normal you are an entrepreneur the day you have everybody loving you something is wrong <laughs> okay i mean some of you for example for whatever reason just don't love kfc right and many people may love it but you just don't like it you know and they've not done you anything but it just doesn't go well with you so as a business you must be comfortable with the fact that everybody will be okay with your product everybody will be okay with your services that's fine and some will go criticize you that's okay and you better have the meat the bone the the, the mental stamina for that else you won't be fit for entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship is really, really hard. Years ago, uh, I used to have people call me. We, we had the Vox SMS portal. Because we're still small. And some would just heap in salt. Because sometimes the network is bad. So they're trying to send SMS. And it wasn't going. And they would call and insult and insult and insult and insult. And I'm still having to beg. We're so sorry. It's not our fault. We partner with a European company. Uh, they just sent us a message. There's a downtime. They will soon be back up. We'll get out. And they will say, oh, man. And you still have to be begging them. I remember, you know, three or four years ago, a gentleman was in my office. And he came to my office and then went straight on his lean. Uh, and he was begging me. And I was like, I don't understand. Uh, first of all, I'm not sure I, I, I know you. And you're embarrassing me by kneeling down. Please stand up, sit down. And he said, I used to know you way back when you used to do bulk SMS business. 
and one of those people will call you and cause your life out, cause you a generation. <laughs> he said, if I had known that was just a face of your business, I would not have done that. See what God has done with your life and business. See how big you are. You're in four continents. I obviously, it was a face. He wasn't, you know, and I said, look, first of all, I can't remember. I know people, a lot of people cost me. <laughs> a lot of people said things, but I can't remember who said what. It was over the phone. And and you have way, way forgiven, right? So if you're going to do business and you have to leverage on other people's time, remember, these are employees. They will talk. You can never please people, particularly when your business begins to get bigger. Some things will be done by your managers and it will still be your fault as a business founder, right? Um, when you're leveraging your other people's money, sometimes business don't go the way you plan. Right, so be prepared for that. Don't just uh, um, say, "Hey, I'm expanding business, I'm raising capital," and you are not prepared for what if it doesn't work. For example, we only started raising capital three years ago, right? Full scale, and so for our real estate business, we run it with our own money and sales. That's why sales is very critical to running a business. You have to master the art of selling. So for nine years of running our real estate business, the first seven years, we did not raise a single fund. We focused on our private money and family and friends' money and focused on, you know, what I call, and this is very important, this is very, very important, social capital. One of these days when we talk about uh, corporate finance, we'll look into, you know, types of capital. Right, cash is just one of them. Another capital is called social capital. Uh, social capital was one of the things we leveraged on by going to meet landowners and say, Hey, can you allow us to start selling? As we sell, we pay you. That's even how we started our first estate. So, all this conversation around of saving, I don't have capital to start my business, that's the problem. If you have social capital, it will give you even what money can give you. So, for seven years, we use family and friends money, private money, social capital, and our ability to aggressively sell, to raise liquidity for our company. And it worked. And it was fantastic. It's one of the uh, major, biggest strategies to scale fast that I've seen, right? Um, amazing. What wonders. And it's why we're where we are today. So it's important to know OPT, and OPM. Another one that you can live, of course, that is a combination of the two, you, is technology, scale with technology. You obviously cannot scale with technology without having money to pay, and you can't scale with technology without employing more people, because some people have to manage those technologies. 